harsh term. Okay, uh, we're going to New York to be inducted. Well, it's the kind of thing that you can, in the beginning, feel very suspicious about. You know, you think, oh, Jesus, you know, this, what does that mean, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? But something happens at these ceremonies that doesn't exist anywhere else. It's like, can be very emotional and very funny and... And it's not like these award shows. It's a, it's a whole other thing. But anyway, a lot of people go in with some reservations, and just about everybody comes out of this thinking, I saw some stuff tonight that I'll never see again as long as I live. <laughs> I want to talk about what it was like to be a musician, a serious musician who couldn't be in the band. And uh, that was tough, it was hard. I, was, uh, I remember being on tour in about 66 or 67 with a band called The Cream, and we thought we were the bee's knees, you know? He, uh, he got in touch with us and, and, and he told me that uh, he was breaking up his band Cream. And it was because of hearing us that he decided to do that. And I thought, well, I kind of like Cream. I don't, well, what's the problem? And, and he said, well, it just, it did something to him. And it was a decision that he had made. I wanted to be in the band. He was coming to Woodstock to ask to join the band. And, uh, and he, ne he, he never mentioned it in all these years, that, he, that that was really what his plan was. I mean, I didn't have the guts to say it, you know. I didn't have the nerve. I just sort of sat there and watched these guys work. I mean, I can understand why he couldn't bring it up to me. I was the guitar player in the band. I mean, it was like, was he asking for my job, or was he just suggesting that we didn't have enough guitar players? I don't know. I spent the rest of my career, until the last waltz anyway, trying to find ways to imitate what they had. And it was an impossible dream, really, because from where I came from and from where they came from, completely different worlds. But it was something to do with uh, a principle that I got from what they did, which was integrity. Integrity and, and a standard of, of craft that really didn't bow down to any kind of commerciality. And, and I really identified with that, and I, and I adored it. <laughs> after we performed that night, we realized that finally, I mean, he was talking about it there, but it finally happened. He did become, you know, part of the band. Go down Moses, there's nothing you can say. It's just don't Luke, I Luke's waiting on the judgment day. Well, look, my friend, what about your hand, Lee? said, for being so gracious to induct us this evening. Most of all, I'd like to thank my wife, Dominique, who's been patiently putting up with me for 27 years. And our three children, Alexandra, Delphine, and Sebastian, 
for being the truest inspiration in my life. We should thank Ronnie Hawkins for being so instrumental in us coming together and for teaching us uh, uh, the code of the road, <clears throat> so to speak. Um, Bob Dylan for not caving in when we were being booed everywhere we played and when just about everybody was saying, get rid of these guys. He didn't budge. And Elbert Grossman for his kitchen and his guidance, and for actually starting the whole Woodstock thing. If it wasn't for Albert, the festival might have been called Poughkeepsie. <laughs> the Poughkeepsie generation, it just doesn't quite have the same ring to it. I'd like to thank my friend Martin Scorsese for lending his filmmaking genius to The Last Walls. I would like to say how grateful I am for the opportunity to make music and records with Rick Danko, Garth Hudson, Lee Von Helm, and Richard Manuel. I'm, I'm convinced now, as I was then, that nobody in the world could sing and play the songs that I wrote with as much believability and soulfulness as they have.